Hello everybody, welcome back to Rocking at the Movies. My name is Shane Comley White and I'm going to be going through the final part of the Bloodsport movie. And this one is we're going to be delving into, as you can see, the preparation for the Dim Mac. Just a bit of a breakdown. The scene that we're going to be going through is where Jean-Claude Van Damme, or Frank Dukes, arrives at the tournament and he hands in his papers or his invitation to be part of it. And no one really actually believes that he is part of this family or representing the family. So he needs to prove himself. So with this part, he demonstrates something that only that family should know. And that is called the Dimak. So when it comes to the, the ninjas and the, the Japanese styles, a lot of the training is passed from family to family to family. And as far as we know, there are secrets that are passed down from generation to generation. And those aren't given to the general public. So this particular technique could be or should be one of those family secrets that are passed down. So we're going to go into it just now, called the Dimmak. And one thing I do want to say, a lot of people think that this actually is not true. But I've got a, a surprise for you after this little snippet here. So don't go anywhere, keep watching, and let's see how it goes. There we go. Handing in his invitation. It says he represents the Tanaka clan. They don't believe him because he looks... You don't look like Tanaka. There we go. He looks western, not eastern. Bruce Springsteen. There we go. That should be the secret training. Death touch. That only certain families should know. Breaking bricks. Demonstration of technique, strength and power. Especially technique and energy flow. Bottom one. <laughs> Let's just add to the d difficulty of it. Check how curious and nosy everybody is. But I suppose he's going to be one of your opponents, so bet you look out and see what he can do. That should be passing the energy through the, the technique itself. So it's not about the power. That's all about an energy technique. So because of proving himself, he's welcomed to compete. Definitely worth it. Right, as I said, I have a special surprise for you. I found this on YouTube. I will be posting a link below, and you'll be able to watch it yourself if you wish. But Frank Dukes was interviewed and he had a bit of a demonstration where he actually showed this technique live in front of two presenters as well as live on air. So this is coming up right now. Don't go anywhere. It will be here just now and you'll see Frank Dukes doing exactly what John Tolf and Dunn did. Slightly differently, but still exactly the same. All right. Are you ready for it? This is going to be the actual demonstration of the DMAC done by Frank Dukes, the real Frank Dukes, and basically he says it's the ability to hit an opponent without leaving marks or bruises. I'm not going to talk through this one. Have a watch. I might, I might comment. <laughs> you never know. I always do. All right. Let's watch this. Is what is known as the death touch. The ability to hit someone, leave no bruise, no mark whatsoever, and yet kill them or let them die hours later. This so sounds like a James Bond movie, you realize. It, well, it's quite lethal. James Bonds of Japan. Those are just ceramic tiles. Concrete bricks. 
No spaces in between, if you notice. A lot of breaks that we do nowadays always put little board spaces, but watch. You guys ready for this? I was amazed when I saw this. Okay. It's just like in the movie. He breaks the bottom brick. Okay, the bottom concrete brick. Leaving the two ceramic bricks in between the two different concrete bricks without breaking. They were fully intact. They didn't shatter, they didn't break, nothing. Okay. The top concrete brick should have broken. So if you can explain that to me, either it was fake, which I'm not saying it was, so please don't get me wrong, but most people will say, oh, but maybe the top brick wasn't even a proper brick and it wouldn't break because of whatever, whatever, or the other one could be an aerated brick, which some people have done and do. I've seen that actually where they actually mix the concrete to have like a lot of air spaces in between it. So it's very powdery, um, smooth on the surfaces, but a very powdery consistency in the middle. And that's why it could break. I don't think that that is it. Because why would you go up on TV like that, where there's a lot of criticism and a lot of people watching you, and do something fake, especially when you've got a name like Frank Dukes does, especially when there's a movie about Frank Dukes, as well as especially when you are recognized and known as a secret agent or military specialist for America. You don't just mess around like that. So in my opinion, might be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong. If anyone knows better, please leave a comment in the bottom because my opinion is those were real. That break was real and that technique is also real. And I'm going to go try that. If I succeed, I'll film it and I'll let you know. If I don't, you'll never hear from that again. But I've broken a lot of boards, I've broken a lot of uh, tiles as well. And it's not easy. There's certain things that are not easy. Now, one thing that we do when we do break the boards is sometimes you'll hold one board at a time, or sometimes you'll get someone holding maybe two boards at a time. The maximum amount of boards that I've broken, now keeping in mind that they are about two and a half to three centimeters thick each board, and I've broken six of those together. So do the math, it's quite a big chunk of wood that you're breaking through. And you're doing it with whatever technique is allocated. It could be an elbow, it could be a punch, it could be a kick, a knee, um, but those boards are not easy to break. The other thing is the tiles, the roof tiles or the floor tiles and concrete blocks are also very difficult to break. And if you hit them wrong, they punch back. Bruce Lee always said in one of his movies, however, he didn't mean it in real life, um, the boards don't hit back. They said it in this as well. So <laughs> with experience, because of the flexibility of the wood and the way that it kind of moves as you hit it before it snaps, if you don't hit it properly, it bounces back and it does whip back into your hand. And you could actually cause a lot of damage. All right, we come to the end of this this theme of blood sport, and we're going to be wrapping up with this right now. So please like and subscribe. Don't forget to comment and share and join me on Patreon. Please support this channel as we've got a lot of new things coming up. The next theme that we are going to be working on or the next show that's coming up for the next month or for the next four episodes is going to be the Mortal Kombat movies. So this is also a fantastic one. A lot of fantasy, a lot of kicks, a lot of fancy costumes. We're going to be going through some of the different martial arts actions and fight scenes there as well. So don't forget to like and subscribe, hit the notification bell, and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Cheers. Bye.